Hello, everyone. Perry here with another Sundance 2019 interview. I am sitting with the team responsible for the souvenir, and we have the opportunity to talk to them thanks to the Kia Telluride. So a huge thanks to our great sponsor for making this happen. I have to do this just to jump right in because a lot of our viewers do not know what the souvenir is just yet. So would either of you mind giving a brief synopsis? Uh, <laughs> uh, it's a portrait of a young woman who wants to be a filmmaker who gets involved with a very charismatic man um, and he is very supportive of her ambitions to be a director um, but also uh, destroys her confidence in some ways. And I know that uh, this is semi-autobiographical for you so I was wondering what inspired you to tell your story this particular way? Uh, well, it took me many years actually to, um, to, to feel ready to tell the story. I think probably 30 years ago I started thinking about making a film on this subject and then um, it just takes a long time to develop these things. I'd write ideas in notebooks and, and then it just felt like the right time to do it. Out of curiosity, when you first jumped into it, compared to what I saw last night, are there any drastic changes that happened? Uh, a lot of changes happen. <laughs> a lot of changes. Ha it's changing all the time, in fact, when we're making it. Is there any tailoring these characters to the fine folks that you cast in this film? Because I'll be honest, like I can't picture your role any other way with any other person in it. Well, I'm, yeah. I, I met Tom uh, early on in the casting process, and I didn't look any further. And what was it like for you to know that like, she saw you as a perfect fit for that role? Which oh, is a, a well. character I probably will not be able to shake for a while. And we were just talking actually about how I see a lot of midnight movies, but it's different to see someone who is an outright, you know, easy to label villain versus someone that's destructive to another person, but in a very natural, almost subtle kind of way. Yeah, I think um, I've always been fascinated by how the most insecure people, um, a lot of effort and time goes into cultivating a kind of note of certainty in their voice so that to other people they appear to have uh, the whole picture and that can really draw people in. And Anthony, I think, seems like one of those people. When you first meet him, he seems to have the whole picture. He seems to have certainty. He's almost a kind of fundamentalist about art. But it's hiding this black hole inside him, and uh, and j j j one of Joanna's huge strengths as a as a creator is her is her mobility, and so you really feel that you're allowed to uh, to make something your own, and that, that 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 you know that you're a kind of co-creator in it, and um, so yeah. And just in answer to that question, yeah, you really felt you could, and and there was a constant. Not only a dialogue, but I felt sort of beyond dialogue, a, a sense of complicity, even about the kind of where I was sitting in relation to the, you know, because I, I, one of the first scenes we did, I, I sort of, ang the camera was over there, and I kind of angled my background, because that just kind of felt right, and then I was going, is that fear, am I doing that because I'm just scared, and it's like the second day, and... And then I think you came over and you said, I quite like it. It's just you're this shape with emanating smoke. And and so I, I don't know that it was a real complicity between us all and Dave at the DOP. It just it just felt like we all knew what story we were telling, even though it was uh, developing and changing. With that point in mind, it makes me wonder what you like to go to set with in hand in terms of prep storyboarding anything like that or do you like to stay more fluid because some of these shots are just so specific where you know a, a shot of the two of you talking that just lets them sit and breathe in a scene yes yeah well i really um fluid is the word i don't like coming to set with anything in a way i mean of course mm -hmm. i'm thinking and working all the time um, as we're shooting, we're shooting in story order, which really helps that fluidity. Yeah. But I really, I don't want anything in my hands. I don't want a hundred page script to carry around mm. because I want to observe and, 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 and use my instinct. Um, uh, yeah. and, and I've got all the material in front of me. 
So no prep material in hand, but do you go with like a coffee or something like that? Coffee always <laughs> is very important. It's, it's vital. <laughs> um, and considering that, what was the extent of this shoot? How much time do you have to do something like this? Because there's some primary locations, but it does feel like you guys are kind of all over the place and that the scale and scope of this, it feels big to me. Well, it's in interesting because there was, no, there was no scope in the sense that we were in one place. We were in an aircraft hangar, huh. where was, which was the setting of the film school, <laughs> but the apartment is built inside Sold a hangar. very, very well, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> and then some of the locations uh, outside are, are all in one building. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's actually, we were in a tiny little area, which huh. was bliss because it means there's more time to work. There's mm. more time to play. Mm. Does that make it a challenge from a visual perspective? Feeling like you're, you're stuck in one place on one soundstage or even with the apartment and things like establishing the geography of the apartment too? Uh, I find it really exciting actually. The more, the, the more limits in a way, the more creative mm. you can be. Is there any specific example of a situation where you were limited in some respect and something beautiful came out of it that everybody can keep an eye out for? Uh, that's... Uh, what can well, you think of something? Yeah. Uh, it's in, I, it's I, it's so liberating to work with a director who who is not uh, obsessed with close-ups or seeing your eyes or you know there's uh, there's this kind of idea that the, 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 the eyes carry the emotion and and of course we all know what what people mean by that but but there's so many other things uh, to, to to read especially in a two shot or a wide and um, I think there was once or twice when you were almost tempted to come in close and we kind of ran out of time and I'm sure you would have ended up using the too short or the wide anyway because it just it, it, it just it's it's it it's such a more it's just such a different way of of watching a film when when you just hold back from that and you're seeing knees and shoulders mm -hmm. and instead of just you know this all the time the body body language is yeah. so important and the choreography of a, of a shot and and yeah when you're when exactly when you stand back you can see the body's moving within mm. space and that's so interesting and i find yes if i'm suddenly you know we're at the end of the day and we've got half an hour left for a scene mm. often that scene you get the magic in it mm. I can definitely uh, see that happening also. The, the shots where you're sitting opposite one another, that's when the body language is, is mm. kind of vital to me rather than the traditional cutting back and forth. But I obviously have to talk a little bit about honor here because, oh my, oh my, for a, a first uh, lead role in a feature film, this is clearly not easy whatsoever. So one what made you confident in her ability to take this on? And then two, what kind of burning questions did she have for you before you started shooting? Well, I, I mean, I, uh, there was just a moment when I met her quite late in the casting process. Um, I was almost wondering if I was going to find the right person. And she was talking about her experience. Uh, it was just spontaneous. I mean, it was, it was just a conversation. It wasn't a casting session or anything, but she was talking about her experience um, as a 19-year-old, because she was 19 when we shot the film. And there was something in what she said that made me think, that's Julie. And then from that moment, I have that little moment of realization and then I don't, I, well, I didn't waver. I mean, I, I didn't doubt anything. I felt like I, I had her and then we go on that journey and I enjoy, I enjoy seeing what's going to unfold so we don't have any audition process. Um, and she very bravely, unlike with Tom, didn't see a single thing written down. So she didn't have so many of the burning questions because she was willing, she said, I'm, I'm gonna come on the journey with, with you. And so, you know, we took each other's hand and day by day went through the story and she discovered it as it was happening. Huh. Um, to follow up on something you just brought up, what was the, uh, the specific thing she said to you that really just made you, uh, made her and the role of Julie click in your mind? It's a little, it's a little bit personal, oh, okay. to be honest, but it was just something about, it, 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 it was something that connected with my own experience of being that age mm -hmm. and... It, uh, so there was a little, yeah, kind of twinship moment where I just thought, yes. And there's another personal level to that relationship too, because I believe you're friendly with Tilda too, her mother. Um, 
was also because you just mentioned that she came up rather late in the casting process honor was tilda on board from the start and then just later in the game said like why don't you consider honor well she uh, uh i can't remember exactly at the, the exact point that tilda was involved but it wasn't right at the beginning but it was at a certain point when i was still finding julie and i thought okay i better get you know better cost <laughs> cost the film and uh and there was no question of honor in the picture at that point i mean honor has never considered acting as a career. You know, she was 19, just shortly out of school. You know, she's planning to go to university. So, um, you know, it was something that really happened when I was visiting Tilda to talk about the role of the mother. And, and Honor and I crossed over. We were on a platform. She was coming up to Scotland and I was going back down to London. So we just had this moment on, on, the, on the railway platform, um, this conversation, and that, that's when that moment um, occurred. And then, of course, it was up to Anna to decide if it was something she wanted to do. Yeah, that, that is incredible. I know she's not here right now. Has she seen the film? And, and how does she feel about seeing herself on the big screen in her first feature film? Well, not her first, but at least first in a leading role. Because I remember she was in I Am Love, I think. Yes, yes, yes. Um, no, it's her first big, big role, and she has seen the film. I think she's now seen it uh, three times because I wanted her to see it um, on her own to start off with. Mm. Um, to to uh, to experience it because it's a big deal when you see yourself. I don't know what it feels like actually, but I can imagine it's a big deal seeing yourself on the screen for the first time. Um, and uh, and then Tom also saw it ahead of Sundance because I didn't want either of them to see the film for the first time here. That's uh, yeah. Can you uh, identify that with that at all? Do you like watching yourself? I mean, maybe not like watching yourself on screen, but do you like to watch your films, uh, especially before premieres? I think it, uh, so many other thoughts kick in while you're watching yourself, so it's quite hard to just sit back and, yeah. But I think, you know, I, I, it's a testament to the film when you are able to do that, and I really, uh, certainly the first time I saw it was just uh, completely kind of absorbed in it and, Obviously, the second time there's an audience, so mm -hmm. it's a whole different thing. And you both went into the screening last night with it being public knowledge that you're shooting the sequel this summer. So just curious, were you kind of waiting nervously for the reaction out of this part, knowing that you're already teed up to go make another movie? I didn't think it of it exactly in that way, but I haven't looked at anything uh, written about the film from last night. Mm -hmm because I don't want to find, I'm reading something, a reaction to the first one that will make me self-conscious about anything I do in the second one, because I think the, the sort of name of the game really is, is, is uh, freedom, taking risks. I don't consider them really risk, but I just want to be able to play and not think about what somebody said about the film in the back of my head. Well, without giving too much away, just scrolling through Twitter, I'll just like give you a thumbs up. I saw a lot of positivity in there. Are you able to tease anything about plans for the sequel and how you're going to evolve uh, the characters involved? Uh, I'm, I'm going to just say very, yes. very little because, well, also because I'm still working it out, to be honest. And uh, and I don't want to, uh, I don't want to say something that's going to happen and then I decide yeah. it won't happen because the process changes, honestly, day by day so much. Um, I mean, it always ends up coming back round to kind of what I intended in the beginning, but it just goes on this journey. Um, but it, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, uh, we're going to shoot in June, which is very exciting. Um, unfortunately, not with Tom. Um, but um, uh, it's going to be a continuation of, um, of, a, of, of the of journey of a, a portrait of a filmmaker. I am very, very eager to see that. A huge congratulations on this movie. Guys, the souvenir, keep an eye out for it from A24. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for Kia Telluride because they make all this happen and we are super grateful for it. Like and share this video. We'll see you soon with more Sundance coverage.